I've been up to some resting, some training, some other private stuff. But yeah, I was spending uh, some time with my family and, and train. That's what I've been doing, waiting for the fight to finally come up. Yeah, speaking of, about that, you know, it was moved from UFC 298. What were your thoughts when you heard that it was going to be moving to a main event? Uh, you know, uh, the the fight when the fight's moving is a little bit hard because you know you are you know already heavy camp and uh, you just uh, you know uh, a little bit tired and you're just waiting for uh, the final day and now it's rescheduled so that's a little bit damage to the to the to the camp schedule but it was cool it's always nice to see your face on the posters and uh yeah so i agree and uh, since i know there was some problem with tie there so uh i had such things in the future and somebody did it for me so why not was there any disappointment that you wouldn't be fighting in front of fans and maybe was that replaced with the fact that now you're a main event where you know you can shine on this card yeah, that's uh, something I was thinking. Like uh, you know, the UFC, the pay-per-view events are you know a little bit more uh, the big, bigger event. Uh, and it was nice to be uh, in Anaheim, uh, but uh, still getting the main event, I think it's it's equal for this one. So nothing changed. What do you think of your opponent? I I think Thais, uh Excited fighters, he, fans love him. Uh, for sure, whatever first come to my mind is the heavy hands, uh, storming forward, and try to finish. Dangerous, like till the every very second of the la of the fight. So yeah, that's that's that, that's pretty much it that I would describe him. Do you anticipate it going the full five rounds, or do you feel like you'll be able to get in and out of there pretty quick? Uh, I, I don't mind going, uh, actually, I don't mind, uh, you know, the cardio-wise going five rounds. I, I've i been doing this uh, before and I'm pretty much sure about my, my cardio. But uh, my approach is always go for the finish, try to try to finish the fight and um, I'm hoping to get that done. Will you do a shoey with him afterwards? Uh, <laughs> It's funny, I've been asking this for, for long and I've never done it. And if, I, if, and if there will be like a brand new shoe, <laughs> maybe I will, but <laughs> I might rethink it because now, now I don't feel like I would like to, but you know, there's different emotion when you come off the fight. Uh, and maybe, maybe I will try, but uh, at this point, my, my answer is I'd rather not. <laughs> Have you had a chance to kind of think past this fight? I know you don't want to look past him as an opponent, but have you set some goals in terms of how you see this year playing out for you? Uh, not, mm, not really, because you know there's a learn when you w w which you get from every fight. And my last fight was a loss, and I was very good prepared for this one. Didn't expect that uh, you know it won't last more than 90 seconds. So uh, right now it's a little bit different approach in my head. Try to focus on this one. Try to rebuild my, you know, get back on the winning streak, and then we will start, uh, uh, you know, uh, creating the future. Right now, the tie is my, you know, next step, and that's it. It's only in my head. There's also quite a bit of confusion about what's happening with the heavyweight division right now. You know, there's a champion and an interim champion, but. The thought is that they won't fight each other next, so it's kind of putting a little bit of a backlog of title fights there. What are your thoughts on that? Do you feel like Jones should fight Stipe next, or do you feel like he should fight Tom Aspinall? Uh, I have some insight about it, you know, and everyone, uh, like, I don't know if I want to share, <laughs> share everything, <laughs> but I, I, I don't mind it how it builds. I think uh, for me uh, personally, I would love to see the John Jones fighting Thomas Pinal. Uh, but you know, whatever happens there and whatever brings attention to the heavyweight division is not like I'm. I'm not an expert how to keep it. You know, at the height light. I'm just. Uh, I, I'm just part of it. So. Uh, I don't mind and I don't want to say anything bad about the situation. For me, it's all good as long as uh, I'm not there involved in a, in a t 
title shot. That's, you know, that's some other business <laughs> right now. So I guess we got to get you a couple shoeys and then I'll ask you the question again while you're drunk. Yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah maybe. That's, that's when, I, when I ask for it. But yeah, you know, it's, uh, it's, it's really a tough one to, you know, to sort everything out. Uh, and uh, yeah, if, if, that was m if I was me deciding, I would see a John Jones fighting Thomas Pinot. Thank you. And you mentioned that loss. The loss was to Aspinall, who eventually went on and now is the, the current interim heavyweight champ. Does that lessen that loss any? By any means, I'm sure every loss sucks, but does it, is it a little bit better because the guy went on to be a champ? It wasn't like he lost to a guy that then lost to his next fight. Does that lessen it any, or is that not something that you think about? Yeah, for sure, you, when you have a loss, you just uh, try to you know, figure some stuff that will you know, make, your, make it a little bit less painful. And uh, yeah, that's, what, that's one of the things. And uh, yeah, yeah it's, it's good to see that you are losing to uh, you know, the guy who is so good, and he proved it after. Uh, my fight, so yeah, I just, I just can uh, see where the ceiling of Thomas Pinal is right now. Yeah. So I, I, when I was facing him, I knew how powerful he is. It's like I, I like to challenge myself, and yeah, I, I did. I took the risk, and if um, somebody would ask me to do it again, I will. Well, I guess I was going to kind of ask, you know, were there positives you could take away from Because like you said, in 90 seconds, anybody could take a punch, and especially in the heavyweights, it could just be that day, that that's your number. Or were there positives or there things that you took away from that fight the, that you could use going forward? Um, it was tough to find any positives because, as I said before, I uh, felt like I am in the best shape of my life for this one. And just uh, the the thing I need, I need to accept it after this was like there is a, someone better than me in the in the sport and uh, whatever I could do is just go back to the gym and work on everything of every aspect not you know changing something that I, I thought that would mistakes for sure uh, I need to work much on my defense yeah <laughs> that's uh, that's the one thing but mm, you know it's mentally it's hard to explain because the words never reflect that which, what kind of a feeling you have and what kind of approaching you want to bring to another fight. But uh, I just feel inside that that brings me a lesson and, and now I have a different approach. And I know you said your cardio was great. You're, you're feeling great coming into that last fight. You're about a month removed from when you were supposed to fight. What does that process do? Do you give yourself a couple weeks to kind of just relax and get away from weight cutting and training and then you get back out to it? Or, or how? What was the process for you? What to get back into shape again, knowing you had a time off? Uh, but you mean after my uh, the, the, how the fight got rescheduled? Oh, rescheduled. Yeah, like how do you deal with that month that uh, where they said we're sorry, we're not going to put you here, we're going to put you here, but it's going to be a month yeah, later. Yeah. What do you do with that month? Well, it's usually I just uh, making a little bit low intensity uh, during the training, but I keep training. Uh, maybe the less a little bit less session during the week, and that's it. You cannot change that much because um, when I train, it's never, I never go to the uh, training camp and say how, and, and see how many tr training sessions I have to do. It's like, I just try to feel my body. When it's tired, you just need to get rest. When it's uh, not tired, you try to go harder, 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 and, and that's it. So when the fight was moved, I just, you know, listen to my body. If I feel like I, I'm already too much, I just, you know, took, took the day off or something like this, or maybe less intensity training, but it's, uh, I, I, I don't like to stick to any plan, like, you know, and not building this on, on myself. Try to, you know, bring as hard as possible, but be a wise also at the same time and listen to my body. Sure. And I know you wanted to, to be in front of crowds, but you've had some really good luck or good fights, I should say, good results at the apex. Mm -hmm. So is there a, a point that you're, does it feel confident? Do you feel confident when you fight at the apex? Does it feel kind of like a, a home game because you've been here so often and you've had good good results? Yeah, that, that's one thing. Yeah, it's, uh, it's a lucky place for me. Uh, fight the expert in, in the apex, uh, all wins. I fought in T-Mobile team, or I had a win there. I got married in uh, in Vegas and ha happy live ever after. So <laughs> everything comes to you know to be this this place is lucky for me. <laughs> well, I'm glad you said that. Your wife's gonna be very appreciative that you yeah. said happy ever after. Um, 
The smaller cage, do you like that sort of thing? You know, as opposed to, you know, maybe some of the bigger events, the octagon slightly bigger. Do you like the smaller cage? There is, a, there is other thing I don't, you know, uh, put that much, uh, yeah. you know, thinking about. It's, it's uh, sometimes, uh, you know, it can be your advantage, sometimes it's not, but uh, we both have, we both can have advantage or disadvantage about this. Sure. It's, it's wh whoever, you know, uh, find it. Yeah. And then last for me, I guess your keys to the victory, what needs to happen to make sure that you get your arm raised on Saturday? No, sure, I need to, you know, keep my face away from his hands. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Yes, yeah, that's uh, the, that's the thing. Uh, I thank God it's not a power slap. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. You're not a big fan of power slap. I don't mind it, but you know, I wouldn't go with for this one with Ty. Yeah. <laughs> Especially if we start if he starts first. <laughs> yeah, but uh, for sure, you know, the the other things. Uh, I believe in uh, some some of my skills in, uh, in, in striking, in kickboxing, and I can handle some, some, some fights in a uh, stand-up position. Also, I can break res wrestle and, and grappling, and we prepare for s kind of few scenarios in that fight, and yeah, but uh, I think uh, the, the, you know, the plan is something that's supposed to be in your head, but it has to happen a little bit subconscious, you know what I mean? Like, you, you cannot overthinking about the stuff. So, yeah, that's, that's my approach. What do you think of his striking? Of his striking? Yeah, I mean, obviously everybody knows he has power, but his technicality, how would you rate his striking? Um, the thing is, I'm not a big uh, striking expert. Yeah, as, as you know, I rather uh, judge the, the grappling uh, of people, but... It's not like maybe very technical, but, but you know, powerful, yeah. and that's enough. I don't think like uh, you need to be you need to be very technical if if you have a result, and he has there. He's been knocking out people, so uh, I, I would say that, and then you know, very explosive. Marcin, I mean, we kind of touched on it right there, but I'm curious, like. You know, Tai Tuivasa is known for getting into his brawls and making fights crazy. Are you happy to be in one of those, or are you kind of hoping to avoid getting into a crazy fight with him? Um, I don't mind it. As I said, I like challenges, and he's challenged. And uh, sometimes it's better when, uh, you know, uh, when you have someone who already go there to fight, uh, rather than someone that you have to chase around the, around the cage around the octagon. So it's, it's fine for me. I just, uh, uh, I, I'm, not, I'm not trying to, you know, to see the, my opponent style as advantage or disadvantage. I just, I, I just, I just see him and uh, try to adjust. Of course, man. And you know, I've been around for a, a good while now, you know, a, a good veteran in the game, but still looking young and great up there, man. Uh, I'm curious though, like, not what's, the, what's the secret? <laughs> yeah, what's the secret? <laughs> uh, without looking too far ahead, obviously not thinking about retirement or anything, but because you've been around for so long, I'm curious, like, do you have an idea of how much longer you want to fight for, man? You've, you've fought in so many people. Um, I have no idea. I just uh, feel like, uh, I just feel like still doing good. Uh, you know, I can feel it on my training. I just feel it in the fight, and I think whenever the moment comes, I, I will just feel it. Just don't want to pl plan it, because also I uh, have a mindset that when, you, when you're thinking about something in the future, you, you just, you know, tr bring it to your life. So I don't want to think about retirement. I just want to enjoy uh, my, my, my sport career. No, no, not suggesting anything. Of yeah, course, so. yeah, sure, sure. Yeah. <laughs> But I mean, with that in mind, man, again, mentioned all the great opponents you've fought. I'm curious, is there one that stands out to you as like the toughest guy you've fought so far in your career? Who would be the toughest? Yeah. Uh, Tom Aspinall, for sure. Yeah, there is, there I, I experienced his, his power, and yeah, he's uh, the toughest one. 
course, man. And last thing I'll ask you, Marcina, I just got to get your thoughts on, you know, your fellow country woman, Joanna Janjacek, just got in the Hall of Fame. Uh, what, w what was your reaction to that? I love it. I think he did 100% uh, deserve it. And I just uh, wait, waited, actually, for this to happen. So we love it. The well, Polish crowd is uh, very proud for her and how she built, uh, you know, the, the, the actually... I think she's the legend of, of the MMA in Poland, so, and uh, worldwide, for sure, for the women in MMA, for sure. So, yeah, love it. She's my friend, and I really try to congratulate to her. Best of luck, Marcin. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, but just a super fast one for me, kind of like a fun one, and thank you for taking the time to, to talk to us. Um, they moved it, like you were talking about, with Kenny from Anaheim, February, to here, to Las Vegas. But what was the, the emotion like, the reaction when you said, wow, I'm, I'm in Las Vegas, I'm the main event, I'm on the poster, that every fighter dreams of being on the poster in Vegas. And you did that now. So just how you reacted. Did you get emotional? Were you happy? I don't I think you cried, but how was it when you got that news? The thing is, I, first I had to tell my wife that we don't go on a vacation in <laughs> February 18th. Oh, man. Uh-oh. <laughs> so... <laughs> Yeah, that's that was one of the things. No, but uh, the, yeah, the, I just woke up at uh, six o'clock in the morning and I saw a message from a mess from my manager that uh, the fight is moved. So uh, the emotions were mixed, you know, be between uh, you know, uh, between not uh, getting the fight done so on, and I'm already in a hard training camp and uh, maybe not being as a big pay-per-view event right now. But still getting the, pay, the 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 main event, another uh, post, you know, the, the poster with my with my name, also was uh, something that uh, that made me happy for this one. So mixed feelings, like always, like always in life. Excellent. Thank you, sir, and good luck on Saturday. Thank you.